All right, so let's think back to what we talked about in the last class. We talked about how addition is unique, right? Where if you have 5 plus 7, you're going to get 12 and only 12. 5 plus 7 will never add to 15. There's only one way to add two numbers, right? No, no, that's what we're doing. Is in Assuming that we have the five axioms that we've introduced, addition has to be unique. The um, proof is already done, but we did it using Landau's notation, right? So if you think back to Landau's notation, he said ay is going to be x plus y, where we have the first type of addition, right? For all we know, there could be multiple, so we say, you know, let's assume that there's a couple different types of addition. Ay is x plus y using the first type of addition. And by is going to be x plus y using the second type of addition. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yeah. So Landau's proof uses these two variables here, these two, this notation. So if you look in um, theorem 4, you'll see a proof using this notation. Now, I personally think this is super confusing notation. And so I say, let's just use this notation instead. x plus y with a subscript here, that's going to be the first type of addition. And this will be the second type of addition, OK? So we've already completed the proof that addition is unique. But let's just use a different notation so that we can um, hopefully see it a little more clearly. Now, what do we do? We use addition. Remember that ad addition has to satisfy these two properties. x plus 1 has to be x successor. And it has to satisfy that x plus y successor. has to be x plus the successor to y. And if you think back to what we talked about last Thursday, we said this is not the definition of addition. We said these are the properties that addition must satisfy. We talked about how you, know, you can say, what's something that's metal that flies above the Earth? And yeah, we said satellites or planes or the space shuttle or there's all kinds of other things, right? So we listed properties, but we didn't define what we were talking about, right? Something metal that flies through the air, that's just properties it satisfies. And what it actually is could be anything, you know, a weather balloon or uh, uh, the space shuttle or a satellite. Those are multiple different things that have those properties. Um, and so here we're listing properties that addition satisfies. We haven't actually defined what it is, OK? All right, good. So let's go ahead and take a look at two different types of addition. We'll have addition 1 and addition 2. And what we want to do is we want to verify that these two additions have to be the same. Okay? As long as they satisfy these two requirements, then these additions have to be the same. So what do we do? We're going to do it by induction. And so we're going to consider Let's make sure I get this right. Consider the case where y is equal to 1. Then by property A, let's call this property A. And that'll be property B. Okay. By property A, we have that x 
plus, using the first type of addition, 1 has to be x successor. And using the second type of addition, that also has to be x successor, right? Because we're saying whatever type of addition you want to create, you have to make sure it satisfies these two properties. So there we go. Both of those additions have to give you x successor when you add 1. But since each of these are both x successor, we have that the first type of addition has to give you the exact same value as the second type of addition, at least when it comes to the number 1. Okay. So whatever two types of addition you want to define, they have to agree when you add 1. Yeah. Yep, loom 2. It's the second type of addition. So let's let M, okay, now M changes every time you do a proof, so you have to remind yourself every single time, what does M represent in this case? Yeah, and the condition we want to satisfy in this case, M is going to be the set of all numbers where the two types of addition agree with each other, right? So in this case, we know that M at least has the number 1 in there. This is, this is one place where the two types of addition agree is that when you add 1, no matter what type of addition you have, you always get the same thing. Okay? Now, so yeah, so we've verified that 1 is one element where the two types of addition agree. And now we say, pick up any element where the two types of addition agree. Then what we can do is by the assumption B, we know that the two types of addition have to satisfy this property, right? So what we can do is we can take um, x plus y um, successor using, sorry, using the first type of addition. And that has to equal, by property B, x plus y successor again, using the first type of addition. Okay, and that's true because whatever type of addition you define, it has to be such that when you take the successor of the sum, it has to be the sum of x and the successor. So, we know that this is true by property B. And we also know that when we add x plus y successor using the second type of addition, this also has to be x plus uh, y successor using the second type of addition. So once again, this is just using the fact that we require property B to hold.
And now let's go ahead and recall what had to be true about x plus y using the first type of addition and x plus y using the second type of addition. What was the relationship between these? Forget about the successor for now. We're just looking at these two. x plus y using the first type of addition, x plus y using the second. What had to be true about them? Say, so, yeah, they have to be equal because we said let y be an m, meaning let y be a number where these two agree. Okay? So since y is m, we have that x plus y using the first type of addition has to equal x plus y using the second type of addition. And so take this equation and let's take the successor of both sides. These two things have to agree. But since these two things agree, we can replace this thing with its value in terms of this line. This thing is certainly the same as this thing, x plus y, uh, x plus y successor, using the first type of addition. And this thing, by this line, is certainly equal to x plus y successor using the second type of addition. And so what have we done? We've verified that as long as you have that the two types of addition agree for some item y, then it's guaranteed that those two types of addition will also give you the same result for the successor to y. Right? We have this big chain of equals here. And so what have we verified? X plus y using, uh, sorry, x plus y successor using the first type of addition has to be the same as x plus y successor using the second type of addition. So if it holds for a, va for a value y, then the sums have to agree for the successor to y. Okay? And so, since 1 is in n, and since all successors are in m, we know that M is all naturals. Isn't this notation so much better than that A notation, that A and B notation that Landau was using? <laughs> okay, what have we done? We've, we've shown that the two types of addition agree when you add one. And then we said, now, assume that you have an element where the two types of addition agree. Then it also holds that they'll agree for the successor. Therefore, since it holds for y, and if it holds for all successors, you've knocked out all the natural numbers, so the two types of addition have to agree for all natural numbers. Okay? All right, so that's a much cleaner proof of unique... I mean, it's the same proof, it's just a different notation. Now, 
we're going to do the big important step. We're actually going to define addition because what we did so far is we just said, suppose, like I keep talking about, the metal thing that flies above the air. If you've only talked about the properties it has, you haven't defined the thing, right? If you're just saying something metal that flies above the air, it could be a weather balloon or a spacecraft or, or an airplane. We're actually going to define it, okay? We haven't defined addition so far. We've only talked about its properties. And now we're going to define it. So this is what we're trying to define, trying to define x plus y. <clears throat> and we're going to start by looking at this special case. We're going to say, consider the case where x is 1 and y is just any number that you want. Okay. Then x plus y is really the same thing as, we're, we're looking at the special case of x equal to 1. So this is really just the same thing as 1 plus y. We're going to define this, you ready? Okay. Yeah, 1 plus y. We're considering the special case that x is 1. So x plus y is really the same thing as 1 plus y in this case. So we're going to define this by taking 1 plus y equal to <laughs> y successor. So basically, yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's, it's basically just exactly what you would expect. When y is 1, 1 plus 1 is going to turn out to be 2. So... So that is the definition in the special case that x is 1. Because we haven't defined x plus y for any numbers, we've only defined it whenever x is 1. So we still have more work to do to define it for other x's. Okay. So what we're going to do then is we have to verify that this satisfies those two requirements that we want addition to satisfy that x plus, the, x plus 1 is equal to x successor, and that x plus y successor is equal to x plus the successor of y. Those are the two properties we want it to satisfy. So this is the definition. 1 plus y is y successor. And now let's verify that it satisfies the properties we want it to. So the first property that needs to hold is that um, x plus 1 has, has to be x successor, and x plus y successor has to be 
the successor to s of x plus y. And you'll notice these are different. This says whenever I add x to 1, I should get x successor. This says that I'm defining 1 plus a number to be that number successor. So they are two different equations, okay? So let's go ahead and verify that this first property holds. We'll call this A and B. Then what we're going to do is we're going to consider the case that x equals 1. If x is equal to 1, No, sorry, I guess we're looking at the case that y is equal to 1, sorry. Yeah, sorry, consider the case that y is equal to 1. Yeah, exactly. Both of them are. Yeah, we're still looking at the special case that x is 1, and now we're saying let's let y be the number 1 as well. So we're looking at a special case within the special case. Okay? So... Let's take a look at that equation, x plus y. We're assuming that um, x is 1, because we're in this special case here. And then within that special case, we're, we're going to look at this other special case where y is also 1. And now, by definition, this is equal to, right, 1 plus whatever number is equal to that number successor, okay? So 1 plus whatever this number is has to equal to this number successor. Yeah, it is 2. We don't usually use that word in this class, but if you want to think of it as 2... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I know. It's a very naughty, naughty term, according to Lando. Um, but you, you can see what we did, right? We're defining addition 1 plus a number to be the successor to that number. And so we just looked at this special case. When y is 1, the addition of 1 plus that number just says take this number and take its successor. So that's true by definition of addition of 1. Okay? But what is one successor? It's nothing more than x successor. And therefore, this equation is, is satisfied, that whenever you add 1 to x, you get the successor to x. Okay? So let me just make a couple little notes in there. This is true by definition of addition. And this equation is true because x is equal to 1. This is true since x is equal to 1. Okay, so a couple little notes in there to help clarify where the pieces in that equation came from. Now, in addition to this property being satisfied, 
we also want this property be, to be satisfied. And we're still in the case where x equals 1. But we're dropping, the, we're dropping the case that y is also equal to 1. So y can be anything. want to verify this equation here. Let's set up the left-hand side, x plus y successor. Wait, so we don't know what y is right now? Yeah, y is completely arbitrary. Could be 7, could be 15. So. We do know that x is 1. So let's go ahead and just replace x with its value 1. And we know how to add in the case that we have 1 plus a number. To add in the case that you have 1 plus a number, you just take the successor of this number. Right? So we take the successor to that number. That's the definition. If you have 1 plus a number, you take the successor to that number. So that's how we did it. Add 1 plus this number, take the successor to that number. Now inside, this is a slippery little point in this proof. Inside, notice that we have y successor. By definition of addition, that's equal to 1 plus y. So this guy right here, inside the parentheses, this is the same as 1 plus y. So inside the parentheses, we just replace that, and the successor stays on the outside. So we've verified that this property holds for successors. So we've verified A and B in the case that X is 1. Now we want to let X be arbitrary. Yeah, exactly, because what we've done so far is we've defined addition with 1, right? 1 plus y is y successor, but we haven't defined it for any number. Suppose you want 5 plus y. How do you do that, right? So we've defined it for 1 plus a number. Now we're going to start defining it for other numbers, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to let x be any number such that... Um, x plus 1 is equal to x successor, and such that x plus y successor is equal to x plus y and the successor of that. How do we know that it even makes sense to, to choose something like this? We verified that whenever x is 1, these two properties hold. So what that says is that it makes sense to say 
let x be a number where these two hold because we know it at least holds for one. One has a property that one plus one is the successor to one and one plus the successor to y is one plus y successor. So we know that when x is one that holds, so now we're saying pick up any x where these two conditions hold. Then let's demonstrate that those hold for x successor. Show these properties hold for x successor as well. going to do is we're going to consider the special case y equals 1. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're going to define addition as x successor plus y equal to x plus y successor. Okay. And so like I said, we need to verify these properties. So we need to show that according to this definition, that x successor plus 1 is equal to x successor successor. Okay. And that will verify that um, that first property holds for successors. And we also need to show that x successor plus y successor is equal to x plus y. Sorry, x successor plus y successor. And that will verify that property 2 holds whenever we've defined addition this way. And we're out of time, and I really hate to leave it here. Um, <laughs> come back to it next year. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, I, I guess we don't really have any 